Missing gear shouldn't be a problem. It just wouldn't come out a second year, so it banged the limiter three or four times. It was a super fast pass for the tune up. It went 113 to the 60, 301 to the 330, so it was probably going to be a, you know, a, a low 450 high 440 pass. But because we missed the gear, you know, it was way down a mile per hour. We just ran a 463 missing third gear, but that would have put us at, at uh, Number one, I think. Granis actually ran a 463 last night. He usually just hops right into the next gear, but we've missed third multiple times, you know, in the last couple of races. So I don't know what's going on. Drive fix it. It went hand in hand to talk to Jonathan and Tick because of what they've done in the state game. I mean, they've done some some really big things. We're a smaller company coming up, and I hope to kind of follow their path on what they've done um, and contribute to it. And not only put our product out there, but just to get more people involved in the stick stuff. I've I've been selling car parts at, at uh, racetracks since 2020, and the two biggest things I hear that have always caught me by surprise is how many people come to these events that have never even been to an event, or they always point to the clutch pedal on our pedal assemblies and ask what it is, the younger generation. So bringing something out like that to a race like this that's flooded with automatic cars, it adds something different. It can get somebody's attention in a different way. Uh, my name's Troy Clutz, got a 94 Camaro, 5.3, 94mm turbo, a T56 from Tick. Went a 5.37 last night. Uh, we're having a little bit of an issue with the two step. I think we got that straightened out for today. And uh, I don't know, hoping, hoping to go maybe a low 20. In Q3, we're just taking small steps, getting me more comfortable with the car. And we'll see what happens. Steven Clemens, I got the 69 Camaro in the stick class. Second round qualifying, we just did it. Um, car run good, it had a pretty bad 60, it was like a 1 360, but it run a 5 2 8 to the 8, and that's pretty good for my car. The fastest I've ever run is a 5 1, and that was in Maryland in really, really good conditions. But we're hoping to get, we'd love to see a 490 out of the car. It, it's really heavy, it's like I think I just went across the scales and it was like 3,400 pounds. So we're really heavy. We're just trying to do what we can do with a heavy car, but we're having a good time. We're gonna see if I slip the clutch too much on my 60 foot. Maybe that's why the 60 foot's off, we're not sure. If it ain't that, we're just adding more boost on the 60 foot and try to get it back down. And then it should, should run a low five, maybe a high four. It'd be awesome if it run 490. You might see me streaking if I run 490. So I spent most of the day today just kind of looking over the tune and uh, testing the two-step out here in Q2. Um, so I made it through first here when I shifted to the second. I think it popped the shock out of the shot and shook the tires pretty hard in the second gear. Got out of it, stood back in it, and then it ran a 4, 496 at 153, I think. So for as ugly of a pass as it was, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with it. Um, for Q3, I think that's around like 10 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock in the morning. 
Um, just going to take a little bit of weight off the clutch, make a rear shock adjustment a little bit, and hopefully shoot for a, like a 470, something in that ballpark. Lights Out 14, baby, down here in, uh, in southern Georgia. Um, Chris Moore um, is, is camped next to us, and of course, he's got a stacker with a lift in it. One of the coolest things that I've found about the stick shift class is even though we all compete aggressively against each other, we all help each other. Uh, Chris offered me a, uh, a different slave if we needed it, um, gave us access to his lift so we could make all these adjustments without having to do it on the ground. Um, and then, you know, working with Joel Grannis today, he's helped me out with the IRS setup because that's what he's known for before he went solid axle. And of course, Jonathan, I mean, from the engine trans, everything on this car, the tuning, everything, he's been walking with me step to step on everything. We've got Nick Mann out here. He's been helping us. Um, Sean, you know, just everybody. It's like we're a family, but when we get on the track, we hate each other. You know, so it's, it's absolutely great. I love this class, and I'll never race anything else again. So on Q2, uh, we added some more power into it. We're making good strides with the car. Jonathan's been working with us the whole time to line this thing out. And it blew through the clutch really hard when I made it in a second. So he added a couple of uh, pounds of boost to it, not much. It was an RPM on it, and as soon as I hit second, it just shot right through the clutch. And I happened to be racing him at the time. So. Um, we came back, checked the log, verified everything, we put the car in the air, and what we found on the slave, the back plate, we were all the way backed out, we had no more adjustment in it. So we had, Jonathan had one that had already been clearanced um, and machined, so we installed that right now to stop the clutch from slipping and have some more adjustment in it. So we've got that done, we're going back together with it almost done right now, so we'll be able to hit uh, round three tomorrow in qualifying. The biggest thing for the weekend that our goal is, it's not necessarily a win, but that would be cool because this is our first time testing the car. But the, we're really close to the stock IRS F2000 record right now. So it's right at a 490 So in the 8th. So if we hit 480s in this car, which we're really close to right now, we could uh, obtain the uh, IRS record with a stick car of all things. So that'd be pretty cool. Looking at the data log, and right now I'm doing a file comparison of the boost curve. Just trying to decide what I want to do for the first round, of, or will be the third round of qualifying tomorrow. Uh, anyway, just we made it get fast, just missed the gear, so we want to turn the power up. Try to get faster. You know, hoping to go 430s or even 420s before the weekend's out, and you know, hoping to get that number one qualifier and you know, eventually win the race. If, you know, things work out but right now we've got to you know, get it in third gear <laughs> the way we shift you have to apply pressure to the shifter and the shifter will it will move out of the gear it's engaged into as soon as it hits the cut but if the driver's not pulling the handle or pushing the handle at that moment then you miss it you know it don't it don't come out of that gear because the engine has went from accelerating to now it's decelerating so the gear is under load again, just in the opposite direction of the power being applied. But I feel 99.99% certain I was pushing the shifter like I always do, but it wouldn't come out of second gear. So it's not like we missed third, I just couldn't get it out of second gear. And the only explanation for that is I wasn't doing my part as a driver and I wasn't pushing the handle or there's something going on with the transmission or the shifter. And sitting here in the pits, I mean, I can move it from second to third, you know, clean and easy. I mean, everything is smooth. I've literally raced years since we started shifting with this method and haven't missed gears. And then we've missed gears at or 2K last year at the end of the year. We missed gears at World Cup at the end of the year. Now we're missing gears here. And the transmission hasn't been a part, you know, since those events. It's still the same, you know, as it, as it was. So. Maybe there's an issue in the transmission, but it just don't seem to be.
number one right now, but it's like, didn't get a really good pass for that. The 463, the 1-2-160 one, foot, so we had to set it pretty soft. And yeah. We even set up soft again, because it's going to be it's gonna be greasy right now with all the heat in the track, so. Oh, go with what we got, I guess, right now. Maybe we'll get a nighttime pass tonight if we're lucky and turn it up a little bit for that. What's your uh, full name? Uh, John Rogers. And tell me a little bit about this setup. It's a 240, right? Yeah, it's uh, S14, 240 SX. Uh, it's got Branger's built 2JZ, uh, Precision 88 millimeter turbo, and then a G-Force h pattern transmission. You've been doing h pattern for quite a while, right? Yeah, we took a little break. Uh, we I put a Power Glide in it in 2020, ran 2020 and 2021 with a Glide, and then I went back to the stick. But uh, yeah. 17, 18, 19, we were all stick shift, and we had stick shift record in 19 for a while, and then, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're back at it now. What, uh, did you like one better than the other in terms of the automatic versus H pattern? You know, it's I, it's hard to say. I do like the stick shift racing a lot better, for sure, but the, the auto racing was fun, and it, I'm not, I don't regret it because I learned a lot just to be a better racer overall, and, and so just focusing on the numbers, which seems to be like the big thing for the H pattern guys, but. I feel like I'm a better racer now, and I've, I think I'm glad I've learned all that and take it to the H pattern. What's your full name? Nick Coleman. And where are you from? Wisconsin. Cool. Tell me a little bit about this setup. It's a 91 SN. Um, did it start as a real truck, or did you buy it as a... So, I originally had another truck. I crashed that one, two trees, a telephone pole, broke my arm. I ended up building this truck after that. It's just a cab. And then I got all the body panels, like the fenders, the doors, the bedsides uh, from Ricky Wheatley, uh, Racer's Edge Fiberglass, and just has all nice stuff. The motor is a dart block, 441. It's got LME BR7 heads, John Dochi racing cam, um, solid roller now. What size turbos? They're 88s. Uh, 8896 is from uh, Bullseye Power Turbos. Right on. And then the transmission is a G Force? G Force, yep. Cool. They, with their gear set and then tick the front plate, the ship forks, and then they got a couple other like, little trick parts that are in it too. Right on. Well, you're qualified, what, fourth or fifth right now? Number four. Number yeah. four? Cool. Yep. Who are you going against in the first round? We have Troy Klutz. Okay. What's the fastest you've gone in the truck? To the eighth? Four, uh, 456 to the eighth. What about quarter? It's 695. Do you normally run quarter mile? Yeah, I prefer quarter mile. You yeah. guys are going up for first round soon? I, yeah, so hopefully. Soon-ish. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, so we're here in the trailer, we're waiting on Q4, hopefully we get one tonight. You know, we're supposed to get five qualifiers. Uh, they've already said we may only get four. So just kind of waiting to see what happens. But as far as Q3 is concerned, we put a tune-up in it that really didn't expect to make it down the track. It was a pretty hot tune-up. Just kind of wanted to see what it would do in the heat of the day. And of course, we went about 50 feet, I'd say, 40 to 50 feet. It kicked the tires pretty hard. So at that point, it was an aborted pass. We still didn't see if we could get in that third gear because, of course, we didn't try to complete that pass. So still some unknowns with that. But hopefully, we get another run tonight. And then we'll still get that one tomorrow as well before elimination. So gotta work some of our bugs out.
third round qualifier we went out. We added last night, whenever we were putting the clutch back together, we added a little bit more boost into it. We made the ramp just a little bit stronger. The car really didn't like that. But off the line, um, I had a little problem with the line lock and I got the, I, I made the car stall. So I wasn't able to get started and get the ball before Nick ran up, so I timed out. But since I was up there, we've been fighting issues with the car going straight. I wanted to still try and make the pass, so make sure the car was carrying straight and that we weren't going to have them issues anymore. So when we get out for Q4, I could really let down a good pass and do something. Jonathan got back on the laptop. We took a little bit out and changed the boost ramp on it. We're still hoping that we can get a good Q4, uh, qualifying round in and uh, knock the wheels off this thing. Uh, old Betty White, to wait for a bit. Big single turbo, LSX block. Uh, I do rock a tick performance transmission. Hopefully, I can just stay in front of the guy that sponsors me, Jonathan. So I'm running right now. Good buddy of mine, but uh, if it sticks, it should be a good race. We basically have no idea what the car is going to do. It's straight off the trailer, tune up right now. We've changed so many things since we got here. Kind of got screwed around on our qualifying. Won our round last night, uh, went on 460 again, and 
this third gear again. Been having trouble getting it out of second gear, not really missing third, just wanting to disengage from second. So, uh, swap transmission, put our spare in last night. I think we got back to our house at like 2 a.m. But change the tranny, change the shifter as well, just to you know rule that out. So we're heading up now for eliminations, which we have a buy, so it's a good thing for us. We also made a clutch change, so we need to see if the start line's going to hold that clutch change and just check the conditions for today. So we'll be getting the buy into the final as long as everything goes good. Hey, so last night we got a buy run. We got the buy run. We decided to try and put some power in it and see if I could ride this thing out. That didn't work too well. We rode three wheelies down the track. It just kept going up, going up, going up. So we pulled some back out of it and just put it at the top end. Uh, the biggest thing right now is if I got a chance at this, I got to make all three passes and I got to come out of the pocket and try to double O something um, right out the gate. So um, that's pretty much our plan right now. You know, uh, we're in the top three. So I think that's pretty good for a first time out with a car. Um, big shout out to Tick Performance because if it wasn't for that man right over there walking around that I called Daddy, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> here we go, baby. Yeah, I feel like we had a really good weekend uh, being consistent. Uh, we were always, we never kicked the tire all weekend. We were watching the, everybody do the finals. A lot of people were spinning, getting a little greasy and hot out here. But by the time we realized what was going on, we didn't have enough time, time to make a change. So we just got up here and, and, and hoped for the best. And unfortunately, it did kick the tire at the starting line. I did my job on the tree. I went 0-14 on the light. Uh, that's all I could do. And, it still wouldn't have been enough. I think he's got a monster of a car. But we'll be back out here again. You bet it. All right, so uh, we're here back in the lanes. We're getting ready to collect our trophy and do the winter circle uh, photo. Uh, we made it through the uh, bypass, which was the semis, and then a 448. And then we just ran the final against John Rogers and went another 448. So the car made a, a consistent pass. Uh, we just kind of went back to uh, bracket racer mode, trying not to change too many things. Just got a good tune if we go down in the heat of the day and stuck with it. So. I'm like the only person left in the world who cannot curse it. <laughs> they don't teach you anymore. Yeah. The times that you guys are doing with this uh, yes, amazing. Yeah. The fans, well, every time, popping they're all like, they're all like, you can tell them. I'm at my tent thinking guns <laughs> you know are going I mean? so, off and yeah, everybody yeah, else is all screaming. That was like every time. 